Pardon, are you all right? Yeah, I'm I just, I've got the heebie-jeebies. Is that a disease? Uh, did the curios get you? No, no, it's just, I'm, I'm remembering uh, that quest. Ladies, gentlemen, and masters of all ages, ghouls, goblins, vampires, werewolves, and Frankenstein's monsters, and yet not one of them are the reason that Monster Hunter got scary with Sunbreak. Don't get me wrong, these inspirations are all plenty scary in their own right, but with all the creatures based slightly off of European mythos added in Sunbreak, I find myself less scared and more just awestruck. They are all beautiful and, and their movesets are magnificent, but there was one moment in Sunbreak, one quest that totally knocked my socks off in a scary direction. A quest that had me more sucked into what I was doing in that moment than any quest has ever done in a Monster Hunter game before. I'm talking about the quest Gathering of the Curios. You may not remember the name of it, but you'll definitely remember the quest once you see what it is. Right near the end of the story, just before the final boss, even, this is the most atmospheric thing that you could ever ask for, really. The NPCs at the base tell you there's a monster acting weird and ask you to check it out. Suddenly, there's a key quest for Lunagaron, only you've of course already done an urgent quest to kill Lunagaron in the story much earlier. What could possibly be going on to warrant a second go? Your mind is going crazy with possibilities and then you land on the map of the Citadel and within seconds you realize something is wrong. Deeply wrong. Everything is dead. Small monsters, endemic life, butterflies floating around, everything is dead or gone. All of these things that we've become totally accustomed to filling up the maps, either dead or missing. We've said it before hundreds of times, if not more, Monster Hunter maps are special because they feel genuinely alive, not just like game levels, but like living, breathing ecosystems, except for one singular quest in Sunbreak, it suddenly isn't. I've got a bad feeling about this. Without even showing you the target of the quest, suddenly you're on absolute high alert. This is unprecedented. Everything is dead before you even arrive there? What could this possibly mean? You slowly wander across the map, making sure you aren't just going crazy, and yeah, nothing is there in any zone. Maybe you even took the long way around to get to the monster. I mean, I know I did, because it honestly seemed like the craziest thing I'd seen in the game. I wanted to be absolutely sure that it was every zone, every speck of life on the map that had been erased, not just monsters along a set path to the monster or something like that like that, and well, yeah, it was everything, everything except for the target monster of the quest, surrounded by curios. This, in my opinion, is the most brilliant usage of a one-time quest in all of Monster Hunter. If this happened all the time, it would get tiring, of course, especially in Sunbreak, as the endemic life have become an active participant in the hunt with us, yet to do this for us for a single quest just really shows you how much this stuff matters to you. How much it matters even just being on the map casually in the background as you speed by going Going directly towards your objective monster. It just, it feels normal to see gown goats and boggy and toads and pepper sex, the regular residents of the area. Take them away, leave some corpses behind, and it says a hell of a lot how different the map feels. As if suddenly there is some crazy powerful unknown fiend standing just over your shoulder right behind you, like the Grim Reaper itself has visited the map and left before you got there. At the end of the day, the hunt itself winds up being a pretty standard Lunagaron, and yet at the same time this does a hell of a lot of world building in a matter of moments. Also introducing the base concept of afflicted monsters even without having you fight a monster that has afflicted mechanics, just showing you Lunagaron surrounded by Curios, allowing a slow build up towards the eventual end game of Sunbreak and easing you into it by giving you a proper warning of just how out of hand this could get if the hunters aren't there to stop it. The closest we've really come to this kind of immersive storytelling in a Monster Hunter quest before would probably be something like the Horfrost Reach in Iceborne, until you first properly fight Elkana on the map, it is half blocked off. You can't access the upper half of it at all, though you can tell it it's there because it's still part of the map itself. It's visually there, you just can't reach it. What would have made that even better though is if there was just no obvious tells anywhere that more would unlock. If it looked like the map that we had was the whole thing and none of us expected more to come, then BAM! Quest happens, a cutscene happens, and it's revealed that there are a ton of zones that we've never seen before. That would have been comparatively mind-blowing, rather than what did happen, which was just meeting our expectations slowly, and that is where this quest is a step above the rest to me. It simply it comes out of nowhere, has no preamble, you just walk out and are met with this devastation, and I love the feeling that I got here in the pit of my stomach. 
Death is everywhere. So, that said, what does this mean for the rest of the series? Obviously, I'm not saying this is the best quest in the sense that it should happen again and again, over and over, because that would take away from the feeling entirely. Everything being dead and gone for one single quest is what makes this special, what gives it this crazy feeling, so obviously you can't recreate that by just doing the same thing again. However, that said, it could be a good template for a quest they could aim to spring on us like once per game, once per generation even, not just the concept of everything being dead but just one quest that totally shifts the energy of a place, of a location. Like if a flagship monster did a flyby on a new map that you've been playing on, caused a giant explosion, opening up a crater, and bam, it turns out the map had a whole underground cave system yet to be explored, with new monsters living in those cave systems. That type of thing. Just a quest that totally comes out of nowhere and flips your expectations and understanding of what the game is around you, of what a hunt should be, and reminds you that the story in Monster Hunter actually means something for the gameplay too. The main thing about this is, while I would love more similar types of things to happen in future Monster Hunter games, I don't know if there's any way that they could have this kind of impact again. They nailed it by doing this in Sunbreak with the sheer amount of notable endemic life that we have come to expect to find in these places. It is way more noticeable than it would have been in something like World or Iceborne, for example, but as amazing, as simply incredible as this is, I don't know if they can flip the script this well ever again, partially because now we know that they are capable of and willing to do it, now we know this is simply a thing that could happen. And so the next time a similar thing happens, it will just be less surprising unless it happens in an instant. Secondarily, just the pure act of removing all living creatures from a map except from your target itself is just monumental. It changes the mood of the whole experience. It makes everything feel simply wrong from the moment you step out of the camp. It puts you on high alert, and of course by the end of the fight you realize that mechanically nothing was particularly strange about the quest, but that doesn't change the way it made you feel the whole way through. Of course, that said, that doesn't even mention that this quest ends with the cutscenes that lead to the final boss, and include the reveal of said final boss, and as such, I have to include that as being part of this quest, because that is what it's all leading up to, is that reveal. The curios have eaten and dispersed anything with a pulse that lived in this area, latched onto the final living creature around, and are forcing it to fight until it simply dies from lack of energy due to them siphoning it off. Then, once it goes, once it dies, the Curios run off to feed its energy to the big bad guy of the entire game, forcing him to reveal himself in one of the greatest cutscenes in all of Monster Hunter, causing chaos that knows no bounds and making Admiral Gallius reveal one of the coolest things that's ever happened. A ship that can fire out exploding Dragonators as projectiles, a project that he hinted at earlier in the story just in random dialogue as something being developed far away in the kingdom and brushed off as being top secret without describing what it was, that then culminates in this moment at the end of this already amazing quest, quite simply one of the most badass things that I've seen in the series, a demonic creature that no one can explain crawling up from a pit out in the ocean, only to be stuffed right back in by the Admiral's careful planning and honestly totally over the top methods. Even without the cutscene, this quest would be unforgettable. The way it makes you feel from the very first moment is unmatched, and I really, genuinely do not know if they will ever be able to do something of this scale again in Monster Hunter. At least not something that can make you feel quite as terrified as this does. Because like I said before, repeating the same thing would be just a shame, and I can't envision anything myself that would be quite as monumental as this was. That said, I hope they keep trying. I hope they have a go at more things of this nature because in my opinion it is simply the best singular quest in all of Monster Hunter because they just decided fuck it let's make things creepy and they absolutely nailed it. Let me know your thoughts on this quest if there are any of these types of things that you think they could do in the future without making the specific one feel less impactful or hey even if you just want to vent about not being able to pick up that blast toad you always got this one time that is up to you. Like if you liked the video subscribe to the notification bell for more and most importantly ladies and gentlemen until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye